Hello, welcome to our channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. It is nine o'clock at night. <laughs> it is March 25th. I just recorded the season four of The Road to Avonlea. We are going to be moving on to season five here, and there's a cat in my lap. Uh, so part of the yawning, my four-year-old is exhausting and we're reading a lot. Um, so this is season five. This is the cover here. Um, so I'm going to, I watched a couple um, in these and things start getting interesting here. So on disc one, this is the opening, uh, um, opening of the season. So it's on its own disc and it's probably decently long. So this is Fathers and Son. Felix can't bring himself to tell Alec that he doesn't want to take over the farm. So Felix is working in the White Sands Hotel at this point, as well as working on the farm. And he's struggling trying to do both and realizing that he doesn't want to inherit his father's farm. And you have that back and forth. You have Felix struggling. You have Felix going back and forth. If there's extra noise, my husband's just getting home from being out. Um, but so it's kind of an interesting episode in that you see Felix working at the White Sands and trying to struggle to also get his farm chores and his father expecting him to take over the farm, even though Felix does not want to. And it's kind of obvious they have a big fight. Then he talks to what he, one of the older gentlemen at the hotel, very, very wealthy gentleman at the White Sands who talks about how this man was so devoted to his work and his wife died and he didn't listen to his son and his son ended up becoming a minister, um, a missionary and I believe dying of malaria in Asia and he never got to tell him. So this encourages Felix to quit his job and devote himself to the farm and his father's like, after one being yelled at by Felicity, for one thing, because Cicely believes it's not fair what her father's doing, that he's going to turn the farm over to Felix just because he's the boy. He's the oldest boy, because they do have Daniel, who's their youngest. But Cicely loves the farm, and Felicity yells at her father. It's like, Felicity will do anything for this place, and Felix doesn't. So he talks to his, he talks to his wife. He comes to realize that he loved the farm. His son does not. So he, when Felix comes and basically turns over his last check, his father's like, no, take this. And they talk about how when the train came to town and Alec took his father on the train, how his father hated it because it was too fast and it was too new and it was annoying. And it's like, I got by on stuff on horse and buggy all my life kind of thing and realizing that Felix needs to forge his own path so he gives his son back the money and it's like keep working at the White Sands if it makes you happy because he also mentioned that Felix wants to create his own tea house and basically become a businessman and that's what Felix wants to do he wants to earn the money and he doesn't want to work the farm and so that's really the basis of this episode so then on disc two, you have Memento Mori, which is as the King family prepares for Hetty's surprise 50th birthday party, she received some bad news, which I'm assuming someone died. Um, modern times, after Hetty buys Avonlea's lobster cannery, she agrees to let Jaster and Olivia run the business. This moves on. Friend in need. When Davy Keith inadvertently lands Sarah in trouble at school, she discovers his shameful secret, which possibly means he can't read. I have no clue. Um, the fact that um, Davy and Dora Keith are in this with Morella gone is just very, very weird um, to me. So then you have a strictly melodrama. Janet auditions for the drama competition in which the show's director, Hetty, has very high stakes. I vaguely remember this, and this is just family drama. Okay. Disc three contains the great race. Going against Jasper's wishes, Felix secretly trains for the Harvest Fair, or Janice, which is not Jasper's, um, Chase. This is mother and son, son doing something dangerous. 
um, Stranger in the Night, Alec defends a mysterious stranger who arrives at the King Forest seeking a fresh start in life. Sounds interesting. Um, someone to believe in, a visiting politician courts Alec to run for office Why Felix becomes involved in a scandal. Kind of more local stuff. And this is the one I watched. This is an interesting one. This is Tuesday's Child. The kings are shocked and frightened when Sicily is diagnosed with tuberculosis. Now, I vaguely remember this, and I actually sat down and watched this episode. This is really interesting because this actually has a lot to do with felicity. Um, and there's some weird things going on here. One of the things that kind of disturbs me is the behavior of Rachel Lynn because they find out Sicily has tuberculosis. They're trying to treat her at home. Um, they've just started calling it tuberculosis. It, this is, if you're not familiar with the history, this was called consumption. And it was, oddly enough, very common on Prince Edward Island. The reason I mentioned Rachel Lynn here is because she freaks out because Cicely goes to school with Davy and Dora. What's odd to me in this is in the books that these are loosely based on, particularly the character of Rachel Lynn, Ruby El Ruby dies of tuberculosis and Anne is spending time with her and Rachel I'm trying to think Rachel's living in yeah Rachel because it's when Anne is off at school so Rachel Lynn is living in the house and she doesn't seem freaked out in this she freaks out to be around Felicity because of the infectious disease of her tuberculosis why again in the books which to me would be more accurate in behavior because the author, Maud, Lucy Maud Montgomery, would be aware of how people behaved in her own time period <laughs> when she was living and when she wrote these books. So it's kind of odd. The other thing that's brought in here is Felicity, along with Miss Stacy, who's now working in the general store, um, which again seems very odd because this was the character who was the teacher in Anna Green Gables, and she is technically a teacher. She moves around. Um, but they go and search for information and reading a bunch of articles in the Charlottetown library and Felicity, they meet up with this doctor who's in Summerside, which is kind of interesting because Summerside is where Anne and Gilbert go, um, after they get married, that's where they raise their family. But, um, and Felicity realizes she wants to be, a, uh, realizes she wants, wants to be a doctor. She's about to go off to teacher's college. But she has a big fight with her mother about sending Felicity off to a sanatorium, which was very, very common with tuberculosis at this time. Tuberculosis was killing people like crazy back then. It's killing people now, by the way, just as a reference. Not, in the, not often in the United States, though, according to my husband, it is actually running rapid in our prisons, um, which makes very little sense because it's very treatable. But not to mention there's actually a vaccine for this, but nonetheless, tuberculosis is still running rapid, particularly in African countries, because, um, how to put this nicely? Well, I can't. Money. It's no longer important in the, it's, it's pretty much wiped out in the cap first world and in places like Africa and India, and it's running rapid because companies refuse to give up and earn less money to get the treatable drugs and the treatable testing. Um, I will link a video, recent video from, um, uh, brain, uh, one of the Green Brothers who run Crash Course. Um, I'll link that, um, in the description for this video, just so you can get kind of up to date on the history of tuberculosis. But that's why I found this episode very, very interesting. And uh, they eventually, Felicity convinces Janet to come talk to this doctor. And it's like, we're finding ways to cure it. Now, they did not have a cure for it. They just found out what the heck it was. And they just started calling it changing from consumption to tuberculosis. And yes, some people do survive without too much treatment because tuberculosis is weird like that. But... They were messing around with different treatments at this time, um, nonetheless. 
So that's kind of what the basis of this is. And then we move on to disc four, which is best laid of plans, which is Davy Keith visits Japser's workshop and things go away with a happy result. Otherwise engage. When Gus receives a promotion, he asks Felicity to marry him. He receives an unexpected reply. That would be no, because she wants to go to medical school. Enter Prince Charming. Sarah becomes fascinated by the son of Avonlea's new minister. And then the minister's wife. Janet visits Viola, the new minister's wife, but the townsfolk distrust her unconventional ways. So that is what you're seeing kind of on the front of this. This is Stalker Channing, one of my favorite actresses. She plays uh, the minister's wife, Viola, who is actually from Avonlea, but her husband is a traveling minister. And she's very, very eccentric. So the, the townspeople don't trust her as they wouldn't. Um, the old biddies, as you would consider them, are afraid of her because she's very, very different. She's extremely outgoing. Janet eventually realizes she comes to help her because they get drunk and driving together. Um, and Janet kind of feels ashamed. And But she comes to see her and she's hurt herself. And it turns out he has, she has to help her to bed because something's wrong with her, bike, her back. And the husband eventually comes home and explains we were, I can't remember where they were. They were somewhere in, um, in the Pacific Islands. And a typhoon destroyed things and it destroyed her back. And she's been having issues ever since. And how even from her hospital bed, she was teaching the children. That's how devoted she was. And it does end with them leaving because Newfoundland offered them a position and they're closer to the hospital and her back is dealing with, it. her back is getting worse. And Sarah has fallen in love with their son, which Hattie does not like. And yes, that's part of this episode and the episode before. Um, and he, I believe he leaves. So that's really the end of this season. I will get to season six and seven very soon. Um, and then we will be finishing off Avonlea and moving into the mystery section of the boxcar children and various different video mysteries, as well as moving on to more some homeschooling stuff, particularly as the year goes on and we I start working with Arizona specific paperwork um, and prepping for that. So, and then our kind of first summer where we're actually able to do some school stuff. My child is almost five. Um, most of the camps require being six, which is irritating, <laughs> but nonetheless. So be sure to like and subscribe, check out the channel, look forward to more media and book reviews and a whole bunch of other stuff. Thank you.